I'm looting it all. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Going through the whole starter area. The starter area is really fun in here. Really good starter area. I approve. Well done. <laughs> Go find me one now. It is. It's a, yeah. It really sets the mood. Steel chocolates and flowers. I did. I did. I had a four hour window and I logged off after two. <laughs> now, to be fair, it's early alpha. But, um. Oh, I'm trying to be diplomatic. I just wasn't seeing anything new. Um, even though it's, you know, it was just very basic combat, you know, fight bad guys kind of thing, it, it was nothing new. Not saying it was bad, and it was still very early on. You know, it was pre-alpha, and you know the NDA prohibits me from uh, divulging. But yeah, yeah. I mean, there may be some new, th really cool things coming down the line. You know, they have some ambitious I uh, ideas, I guess. We'll see. <laughs> but right now, I'm. I'm not jumping out of my chair. It was a pretty game. Very pretty game. Got a pretty good idea of how it's going to look once it's finished. and Very shiny. The armor is sexy. They're missing that key element. They're all missing that key element. That sense of adventure. That sense of wonder. Yeah. Yep, they were. It's almost sad that they were trapped in the um, technical limitations that they were. I don't know, just I think it's, and I hate to say it, but I think it's a passion thing. Um, I had a discussion with my dad today, surprisingly enough, about about it and how. Um, When, the, when these games first came out, these MMOs first came out, and you know, I, I'm including this in that in that bundle, that lump, that time period. They're trying to take the tabletop experience and put it into a game, into a video game. And now it seems like they're trying to make a video game like a tabletop experience. You know, it, it's a it's a different approach. It, <laughs> and I think that's that's a big part of it because you know, in the tabletop role playing games, there is no end, there is no final boss. I mean, th there can be, but, you know, that's just the end of that story, and then you pick up another story and continue on in, like, a tabletop game. I mean, in a video game, once you reach the end boss, it's the end of the game. And I just don't think they went into it with that mindset. Well, it was Asron's Call, um, literally did content updates every month, advancing the storyline. Every single month until they went into maintenance mode. Yeah, and it, I think a lot of it is just the point of view that they took. So instead of hiring writers, hire gamers to do the, the script and have them do the script, you know, as if they were assembling a, you know, like a D&D &D campaign or a, you know, a cyberpunk campaign or you know, whatever. Whatever. 
whatever genre they decide to go. I'm tired of fantasy. Jesus Christ, I'm tired of fantasy. I want somebody to do another good sci-fi game. Or a modern day game, or whatever. You know, just one that's good. Just something that's not fantasy. I'm tired of killing dragons. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You can only kill so many dragons before the novelty wears off. Yeah, there, there's a part of that too. Now, I'm, I'm trying not to be too cynical about it. But yeah. Yeah, they're under heavy pressure to uh, produce. And there wasn't as much of that back back in the day. I mean, well, Turbine had to answer to Microsoft and uh, Varent had to answer to Sony. But it wasn't quite the same. Ding! <laughs> It was. It very much was. City of Heroes kind of broke everybody away from that. City of Heroes was, although a very enjoyable game, it was the first one that kind of pushed everybody towards Endgame. Okay, I'm going to go grab a coffee. I will be right back, and then we're going to complete our final mission in the starter zone. I honestly could have... Weeks of fun just making new characters and running them through the starter zone. <laughs> Very well done on the starter zone here. It has that hook. Just one more quest. I'm just going to do this mission real quick. Real quick, and then I'll log off. Just this last mission. <laughs> you know what I mean. Damn, that's good coffee. I'll be right back. <sighs> Mr. X, what's going on? Matrix, no. Anarchy Online. Matrix uh, was dead in the water when it came out. It, it was virtually unplayable. I don't even think anybody bothered with an emulator for it. Yeah, I am. I am. I like my ults. <laughs> I like my ults. I don't like these pistols, though. <laughs> Everybody did. I had such high hopes. Um... Because I love the movies, you know, con something that kind of goes against the grain. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the Matrix movies. Watched them so many times. It was, it was just what I wanted. It, yeah, the, there were plot holes out the yin-yang. Um, I don't care. <laughs> it was, it was a lot of very fun action, a lot of really big car chases, a lot of really just really cool stuff to look at. Eye candy. Plain and simple. With the story thrown in there just to justify it all. Did you ever see Keanu Reeves shooting at the uh, at the range? He went through one of those um, uh, strategic ranges where you have to like pop each target so many times or whatever. Um, you know, first with a pistol and then you with a rifle or a shotgun or whatever. I linked it once in the uh, Discord. He's actually a uh, not a bad shot. <laughs> but back to the uh, gaming conversation. I will bet dollars to donuts. If they just took like 10 game masters, not gamers, but game masters, you know, guys who run like D&D games and stuff like that, and had them create um, a game system and then hand that over to some programmers to have that game system converted into a video game somehow, I'll bet they could come up with something that people would really want to play. And not just the game system, but, you know, the world, the setting and whatnot. Why they use professional writers for these things, <laughs> I just, I don't know. Because, you know, nobody knows how to write for gamers better than a game master. That, that is uh, really a, well, that's, you know, kind of the good part about the current environment is they can, they can just do crowdfunding. Um, they don't have to rely on the publishers so much, uh, the age of the independent is, is here. Yeah, well, even um, Ashes uh, is primarily crowdsourced. Yeah, Pantheon 2. The downside to the uh, crowdfunding, though, is something we discussed before. Um, you're spending other people's money now. You're not spending your own. Uh, so you better fucking produce something. <laughs> so... The, op the uh, opportunities are there for the independent developer these days. But um, there's a hell of a lot more riding on their uh, decisions. 
An independent can go go under really quick <laughs> if he's not careful. But it also gives all those people with all these wonderful ideas. Oh, if I would have done it, I would have done it this way. Well, there you go. Put your money where your mouth is. Here's your opportunity. Lots of things coming. I just don't think there's um. I don't think we're going to see good MMOs any anytime soon. It's just like movies. Uh, the, there's only so many ideas that you can use, uh, especially with the given technology. And uh, they really haven't changed at all in the last, what, 19, 20 years. Um, they've just gotten prettier. It actually has a bit of a um, Half-Life feel to it. You know, the graphics and whatnot. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Zombie survival MMO. I'm telling you. Make it primarily PvE, but you can go to war with um, other groups. And um, you can build your shelters. You can defend your shelters against roaming hordes of undead. Um, go out on foraging missions to supply the community. You can try to do it solo if you want, but you're go uh, it's going to be rough. Make some kind of barricade mechanic so you can barricade yourself into a building or something like that. And then, you know, you can go to war with rival, uh, rival factions, rival groups. Daisy, but more. Um, Daisy's kind of in, going in the right direction, but they need to take it further. An actual MMO uh, where you can, like, build structures and... You know, like with the crafting that they have in like uh, Conan Exiles or uh, uh, the other one, uh, was it Ark? No, is it Ark? You can have it on large scale, you know, like uh, server sizes about the size of World of Warcraft, you know, a couple thousand people, a few thousand maybe. Spread out over, I don't know, like North America or something like that. You can make it modern day. No, those days are over. They've lost their way. We were discussing that at the beginning of the night. You know, I, uh, Ultima, of course, started it, but then EverQuest picked it up and ran with it. Back in the beginning when they were creating MMOs, they were um, doing so from the point of view that we're creating a game based on tabletop role-playing. Uh, because prior to, you know, EverQuest, all there was was tabletop role-playing for that kind of thing. Uh, so they wanted to, you know, that sense of wonder, that sense of camaraderie. Uh, that's what they had in mind when they were going into it. And they've kind of lost that. Uh, now they're making video games. And they're trying to add role-playing elements to it. Instead of making a role-playing game and adding video game elements to it. Just, you know, different approach. And it's um, it's really changed the way, you know, instead of, uh, back then it was about the journey. Now it's about the destination. Now because you have professional game designers building games now, and back then it was all just a bunch of cowboys. You know, they didn't know what they were doing. They were, it was a new genre. It was a new thing. Um, so they're learning, building, having fun. Discovering. And... The discovery's all over. They just use somebody else's engine, add, add some skins to it. Uh, yeah. Well, it's uh, Pantheon. Uh, the the one game that Pantheon reminds people of is EverQuest. Uh, it's like EverQuest with the fancier graphics. Why not just play EverQuest? We already have an EverQuest. You know, been there, done that. We played every major MMO to come out from, well, since 1999. And a lot of the smaller ones. <laughs> and there's a reason why I keep going back to the old ones. There is still room for growth in the industry. Uh, I think they need to get away from fantasy, for starters. Uh, fantasy's been done to death. You need to start focusing on the community rather than the game. Let the people play the game. Don't let the game play the people. 
they'll figure it out or they'll fail in the process. The, the problem is the, the, the audience has changed too. Uh, it's become a much more instant gratification gaming audience. Um, I, want, I want to start my character today and I want to be max level tomorrow and raiding on Thursday. Um, they missed the point. Mm -hmm.